Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Today is Saturday, January 16, 2021. Al Jazeera report. Zango leaps into record books with world indoor triple jump mark. Hugh Fabrice Zango has become the first Burkinabe athlete to set a world record when he posted the longest ever indoor triple jump with a leap of 18.07 meters (59.28 feet) at an event on Saturday in Abier, France. 27-year-old Zango added 15 centimeters (5.9 inches) to the previous record set by his own coach, Frenchman Teddy Tamgo, in 2011. When the student surpasses his master, tweeted Tamgo along with a photo of Zango stood in front of the meet's results cart. Al Jazeera report. Museveni, one-time critic of clinging to power, wins sixth term. Yoweri Museveni has already ruled Uganda for 35 years, and he is now set for five more. The veteran leader was declared on Saturday the winner of Uganda's presidential election, cementing his position among the world's longest-serving leaders. The results, which have been rejected by the opposition, followed one of the bloodiest campaigns in years with at least 54 people killed in November as security forces violently broke down opposition protests. Deutsche Well report. Coronavirus digest. Germany surpasses 1 million vaccinations. Earlier in the week, Health Minister Jens Spahn said that everyone in the country will be offered the vaccine by summer. Some things could have been done faster, he added. Of course there are hiccups in the biggest vaccination campaign in history, however, he said. We will be rewarded for our patients, the Secretary General said in a video message posted Friday that governments have a responsibility to protect their people, but vaccine nationalism is self defeating and will delay a global recovery. Fox report States activate National Guard, close Capitol buildings ahead of Biden inauguration and possible violence. Reports of possible violent demonstrations over the weekend have prompted state governors to take action in anticipation of any potential unrest such as deploying the National Guard, declaring states of emergency and closing capitals, the riot at the U.S. Capitol on Jan. 6 seared an unsettling image into the national consciousness, and state administrations are seeking to avoid similar mayhem in the days leading up to President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration Wednesday. CNN report. COVID-19 vaccines are given with organ music at UK's historic Salisbury Cathedral. England's historic Salisbury Cathedral was transformed into a COVID-19 vaccination center on Saturday, with patients vaccinated while organ music was played in the picturesque building. Local GPs invited patients in the over-80s priority group to visit the cathedral and have their first vaccine doses. More than 3.23 million people had received a first dose of a COVID-19 vaccine in the UK by Saturday, according to the PA Media News Agency. CNN report. This Keurig-like machine for soft-serve ice cream is what the world really needs. It's a rocky road to disrupt the ice cream industry, but Sunday you may get your soft serve from a pod. A new machine called Cold Snap, which looks and functions like a Keurig for soft-serve ice cream, has emerged as one of the buzziest products of this year's all-digital CES tech show, at a time when much of the event, like much of our lives, is focused on ways to adapt to the pandemic, the Cold Snap offers the promise of something sweeter, on demand. BBC report. Mount Semeru. Erupting volcano spews ash above Indonesia's Java Island. No evacuation orders have so far been issued, and no casualties reported. The National Disaster Mitigation Agency NDMA warned villagers living on the mountain slopes to be alert for ongoing volcanic activity. Footage showed ash from the 3,676 meters 12,060 feet volcano looming over homes. The villages of Sumbermujer and Kira Kobone in Lumajang municipality are located in the trajectory of the hot clouds, local official Thorical Hawk said on Saturday. Deutsche Well report. Frankfurt Airport. Terminal reopens after police operation. Authorities allowed staff and passengers back into Frankfurt Airport's Terminal 1 and the airport's regional train station on Saturday following an investigation into an abandoned piece of luggage that was later deemed harmless. Local media reported that two people were taken into custody and questioned by police. Police had blocked access to parts of Frankfurt Airport on Saturday, shutting down Terminal 1 and the regional train station. BBC report. Nepali climbers make history with winter summit of K2 Mountain. Mountaineer Nimsde Purja, a member of the group, said they reached the peak at 17 o'clock local time, 12, 
O-O, G, M, T. Dozens of climbers have been on the 8,611 meters, 28,251 feet, mountain this winter hoping to achieve the same feat. But one Spanish mountaineer has died after suffering a fall this weekend while descending. K2, which is only 200 meters shorter than Everest, is part of the Karakoram range that straddles the Pakistan-China border. Deutsche Well Report. Agriculture reformists slam, industrialized, farming under Angela Merkel. Protest tractors heading to the German Chancellery Around 27,000 people protested Saturday in Berlin for environmentally friendly agriculture policy, according to organizers. The protests, planned by the coalition, WIR Haben S. Sat, were fed up, coincide with International Green Week, a major agriculture and food fair that started on Friday. Activists wave Euro notes at a demonstrator dressed like EU Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. CNN Report. How People of Color Can Cope with Capital Riot Hypocrisy. Justice Horn was in broad daylight, but he could not see as he rose from the ground and blindly stumbled through darkness and pain. The pain was the fire the community activist felt in his face and eyes in June 2020, as he had just been pepper sprayed by a Kansas City police officer while peacefully protesting the death of George Floyd. I've never felt any pain like that before, Horn said. Just to be standing there with no weapons, I don't own a gun, but with a sign and just to turn and get maced. Fox report. Iranian missiles land within 20 miles of ship, 100 miles from Nimitz strike group in Indian Ocean. Officials. U. S. Officials say at least one of the missiles landed 20 miles from the commercial vessel but refused to offer more specifics about the ship, citing privacy concerns. The officials requested anonymity to discuss sensitive intelligence, just as concerning to U.S. Navy officials, the USS Nimitz aircraft carrier strike group was also in the vicinity, about 100 miles away, from where at least two Iranian ballistic missiles exploded on impact when they hit the ocean, sending shards of debris in all directions. CNN report. Australian Open. 47 players in quarantine after positive COVID-19 tests on two charter flights. Preparations for the Australian Open hit a major stumbling block on Saturday after 47 players were told they couldn't train or practice after some passengers on two charter planes arriving in Melbourne returned positive COVID-19 test results. 24 players on a charter flight from the U.S. to Melbourne are required to quarantine for two weeks after a member of the flight crew and a passenger, not a player, tested positive. BBC report. Biden inauguration. All 50 U.S. states on alert for armed protests. National Guard troops from across the country are being sent to Washington, D.C., to discourage any repeat of the deadly riot that unfolded on 6 January. The FBI has warned of possible armed marches by pro-Trump demonstrators at all 50 state capitals. The National Mall in D.C. has been shut. Barricades are lining the streets of the capital amid tightened security. The Biden team had already urged Americans to avoid traveling to the capital because of the COVID-19 pandemic and local officials said people should watch the inauguration remotely. Fox report. Memphis man charged in Capitol riot, Justice Department says. A Memphis man was arrested Friday by the FBI and charged with federal offenses connected to the deadly riot at the U.S. Capitol, authorities said. Matthew Bledsoe is accused of chronicling the violent insurrection in a series of Instagram photos and videos. One video showed Bledsoe and others outside an exterior door where an alarm is blaring, according to the criminal complaint, and a companion is saying, we're going in. Al Jazeera report. Tunisian PM appoints new ministers in cabinet reshuffle. Tunisian Prime Minister Hicham Mekichi has appointed 12 new ministers in a cabinet reshuffle announced amid rising political tensions and a major economic crisis. Mekichi on Saturday named Walid Dabi as the new interior minister replacing Tafik Charfadine who is seen as close to President Kai's side and was sacked earlier this month. The move underscores tensions between the country's two most powerful leaders as Saeed and Mekichi are at odds over their respective powers and political alliances, jeopardizing the stability required to push through much-needed reforms. Fox Report. Rescue efforts after strong Indonesia quake stymied by blocked roads, lack of gear, damaged roads and bridges, Power blackouts and lack of heavy equipment on Saturday hampered rescuers after a strong earthquake left at least 46 people dead and hundreds injured on Indonesia's Sulawesi Island. Operations were focused on about eight locations in the hardest-hit city of Mamuju, 
where people were still believed trapped following early Friday's magnitude 6.2 quake, said Sidar Ramanjaya, who heads the local search and rescue agency. Thank you for watching 5 p.m. recap. To be notified, you can subscribe our channel and activate the bell. Thank you.